Hi, everybody, and welcome to, to this panel today. Oscar, you there? Okay. So I'm very excited to be here today and to be able to talk about fashion is art, sustainability, and design with this very inspiring group of panelists. We've got Mara Hoffman, President and Creative Director of the Mara Hoffman brand. We've got Marina Testino, Creative Director, Artivist, and founder of Point of View, correct? Point of View, yeah. And then we've got Sophia Chaconia, who's the founder and creative director of the Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week in Tbilisi, the PMEX competition, and the Arts and Culture Center in Tbilisi, Georgia. And then we've got Oscar Metzava, who is you're an artist, founder and creative director of uh, Oscar, and also the founder and president of Instituto E. So welcome, and so glad to be with you guys today. Um, if you could just briefly sort of, we can do a little round table, you can introduce yourselves and just explain a little bit more about who you are before we start the questions. Thanks. So Mara, we'll start with you. Hi. Um, oh, Mara, sorry, I heard Marina. Uh, I said Mara, but do we have it? <laughs> and hi, I'm Mara Hoffman. Um, thank you for, uh, for having me, it's great to be here. I started my uh, company 20 years ago, so this um, actually this May marked our 20 year anniversary, which is a really crazy time, an introspective time. Uh, I focus on women's clothing and ready to wear and swimwear. And about five and a half years ago, we made the shift um, towards a more sustainable um, and less harmful direction for our clothing brand. And we focus on celebrating women and working from fiber up on the environmental and human-centric side of sustainability. Thank you. Uh, Marina? I'm Marina. I'm a I'm also an artist and I use arts and Fashion to bring the world around sustainable fashion. Okay. Sophia? Yes. I'm Hello. Sophia Tonya. Uh, uh, I'm the founder of the Fashion Making CBC and the Fashion and Art Foundation. So I'm curating both. So at the moment, we're working on the new art and the culture center. In so it's very short. <laughs> very short. And Oscar. Hi, I'm, I'm Oscar. Um, I'm an artist with education in medicine. And I became a designer. I did my work at, uh, at Austin. Uh, the last two decades, they're developing in sustainable projects on the fashion and industry and uh, my work as an artist in my artist studio and dedicating to yes to, to bring activism uh, in a sense of the art and, trans and transforming it, it to the design into practice great well I look forward to, to to speaking with you guys and finding out more so I'm going to jump right into it, and uh, Mara, I will start with you, the first question, and uh, since the panel is called Fashion is Art, Sustainability and Design, I want to start off with a quote by Marcel Duchamp, the artist, who he once said, when you do a thing, you don't do it in five minutes, or in five hours, but in five years. And as you said, it's been five and a half years since you've transitioned your brand, uh, into focusing on the sustainability. I would like to ask, how was this transition? How did the consumer react to this, you know, your brand transitioning into becoming sustainable? And how easy is it to educate your consumer to understand this change that you went through with your brand? Well, like I said, I, I'm, and like you said, that I made this transition after 15 years of running a company. And I also just want to reiterate that um, by any means, like we are not there. We are not a sustainable brand. We are a company that is constantly working towards less harm and 
new ways of creating systems and from from ground up. So I think that there's this idea around actually being a sustainable brand, but that kind of doesn't exist in a way. So we uh, we got to that place five years ago through uh, great amounts of discomfort, basically. And I've always led from that space where when something becomes uncomfortable enough, um, you begin to search for a shift or change. Like comfort can almost be your worst enemy sometimes because it keeps you in one place sometimes for too long. And so it was great amounts of comfort that came from realization. It came from awareness of what was happening within the industry I'd been in. It had come from a, a sense of feeling paralyzed for a few years leading up to that with the idea that it would be impossible um, impossible to shift. I, I saw it like this cruise ship moving forward and the idea of like turning that fully into a different direction felt almost impossible, but I got to the place where it was more of, um, I would rather close down and stop the business than at least attempt something. And so we started from that place of attempting very quietly and uh, by first examining our existing parts as a company and, and reaching for the lowest hanging fruit. And at that point, it was on a fiber level and where we could replace conventional fabrics for less harmful recycled organics from that space. And at that same time, we were going through an aesthetic shift as well. So it wasn't just like, you know, speaking to our buyers and our customers as, okay, well, we're attempting to do things better. We didn't even speak to any of the shifts for a few years out because everything was still kind of like quietly nose to the ground and very experimental in that. But some of those challenges <clears throat> stem from also beginning to really look different as a brand as well. So our buyers had been buying us for a certain reason for many years, a certain price point, aesthetic, etc., and when we made this shift, we also shift the way that we looked and uh, the way we were producing and the fabrics we were using and everything. So one of the big challenges was continuing to maintain the business we had before. And we didn't do that. We weren't able to maintain the business that we had before. Um, we went through a, a contraction and one that was ultimately chosen and decided upon, but definitely came with a lot of new discomfort of contracting a company that had been on a specific and more um, upward trajectory. So that was one of the big ones was a convincing wholesalers five years ago that this was the route and the route that they would eventually want. And five years ago was a different world when you talk about sustainability and you talk about it in fashion. And by no means were we pioneering it. We weren't. We were, I feel, latecomers five years ago in some sense. So and then, you know, there were so many people, too, that were just like, what? Nobody cares. This price, I don't want a different price point. It doesn't matter. It's not what our customers are looking for. So that was one challenge of just staying the course, understanding people were going to leave us. OK, stayed the course. Um, Another one was dealing with budgets and price points. And when you're shifting everything from the ground up, it becomes a whole new ball game of how you're running your business and how to create budgets from that place and new margins and profit margins. And if you're not being, uh, if you're not profitable, you haven't sort of succeeded at making a model that can actually work for yourself and for others. So that was definitely one, um, all the materials, higher, um, higher minimums because we were making all of our fabrics. The fabrics that we shifted into weren't stock. We had come from a stock business where you could just buy in as many yards. And now we were weaving everything. We were doing it all um, for ourselves. So those were big ones. Um, transparency within the supply chain, huge. Kind of vetting into all of your existing systems and then realizing, okay, this is definitely not going to work. We need to part ways immediately. And this is going to work, but we're going to have to work as partners to really like fix some of the, your own systems. So, and then even when you feel that you've got partnerships secure, there's always to this day, the transparency within your supply chain is an incredibly hard task 
Um, because especially if you are not sitting within your factories, there are bits and pieces that you can't have total control over. So, and then as far as communication, we were so almost, I'd say nervous about the transition and not ever wanting to come across as someone who had figured it out. I still haven't figured it out. And by like communicating that or using, you know, green or sustainability as our lead, especially in those beginning years, um, was something that was completely uncomfortable and not something we were going to do. But at the same time, there were these shifts in price points. So it was kind of balancing that communication. So those were the big ones. That, that was really, wow. Like you said, it, it, it's not easy to be sustainable and you cannot ever be 100% sustainable. And a lot of comparisons for all comparing it to crucial to the open. You know, we, we want to wait a big iceberg that we're going for, so we need to sort of start, not start moving. And there's so many aspects, as we mentioned, that we do need to consider. The fabrics, the designing, the possibility. Um, I know, and as you said, we're not paying this, we're following on, on, on something that was started. I mean, we can trace it back even to 1983, when the UN commissioned the, what was it called? the the Brundtland Commission, where they had to actually understand what is sustainable development. And they published the paper in 1987 with the definition that sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And which led on to the, the 2030 agenda of sustainability that the UN has, has put in place. Oscar, I know you, you started your brand in 1998 with the Lemon Paper. And you were an advocate for sustainability over 20 years ago. And I know that uh, you've got the philosophy, which is the ASAP philosophy, which is as sustainable as possible, as soon as possible. And kind of like picking up from what Mara said, you design, but you work backwards because you, you create your product first, you design your product, but then you you try and understand what materials you can then make the products in by looking at what is available from a sustainable source. Is that correct? You, you, you're on mute. Sorry. Then, oh, sorry, guys. No, I'm not. Uh, maybe in back. Yes. Is it fine now? Yes. Yes. Uh, no, I would say it, it's the opposite. First of all, as Mara said, and you said, uh, sustainability is not about being 100%. Sustainability is about uh, a going on process. It's a going on process. Come on, we, we are living, our generation, we're living a uh, transition moment of uh, the line of civilization. We are changing from 200 years of industrial revolution, industrial uh, revolution now, to another one. So it takes, I, I, I like to say that I'm as an artist, uh, I, I can, I, I, uh, to work in fashion, it's great because we can transform concepts into practices. And even entrepreneuring it as a fashion, we can really change and bring numbers. So um, yes, as, up, as sustainable as possible, as soon as possible. We have to begin. I remember, I remember 20 years ago, when I first began to, I, I began searching for new materials. We couldn't find some sustainable materials, at least in Brazil. Uh, or uh, other countries should be uh, something uh, you couldn't find it. But we didn't even understand at that time what what means sustainable development. As you said now, we yes, we can use the natural resources that we have now if we keep them. In the same way we found it, or better, to the next generations. It's so simple. If we understand that, you know where you can be able to work on. Um, now, you know, what I think it's interesting about my work and with my teams at Ausland and in, in the, the Institute, where, the Institute, is that we, 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 serve, we, we have developed, we have developed new materials from some from zero, from cradle, some others, some projects from NGOs inside the forest on in the, the on cooperatives or in the slums, the favelas, things like that. Some of your social and environmental uh, projects and even some industries, some new materials like the recycle pet in that time, you know, 
So some of the projects we work at the hard on, on on the on the ground. You know what, what I really think it's important people understand um, what I can bring from my experience is that, and, and the same thing I did uh, last uh, year in the in collection. I worked with Courage in in Paris. Um, I think uh, it's not you. It's not about using materials. Designers, we have to have the social and environmental design thinking in our minds. As we have colors, as we have textures, as we have uh, different materials, as we have our concepts, you know, everything that what, what we have in our mind when we begin to, to work, to search, if we have already in our design thinking, sustainability on it, this will be in our car. It will be in our car process. So it's super important for us to understand that and not be pushed by and criticized as I was in 20 years ago. I can imagine you, Mara, also when um, people used to say, no, but you are only 10% uh, sustainable, something like that. Uh, I had experience with some uh, certifications and some institutions that would say, no, but you're not 100%. You can't say you are sustainable. Well, I'm not saying I'm 100% sustainable. I'm just showing, expressing to my consumers, my clientele, my stakeholders, you know, um, what is sustainable in our project and how beautiful, how innovative, how cool, you know, how luxury is this process that there is on behind. You know, um, it, what, this is about the new luxury thing. It's about to people have to understand that luxury comes from how it was made some product or service. The noble, no, the no, I like to say, what's the noblest value of the human being? I, I'm gonna help all of us when we dedicate ourselves to the others. It's the noblest gesture a human can do. So when we dedicate ourselves, our, ta our time, yeah, we dedicate ourselves with our time, our talent, our research, our love to do something so well done with the best practice that you believe. Of course, this product search will become something sophisticated and this will become something uh, luxury. So the new luxury, I think it's the values that we have behind same as luxury, all the elements, quality, uh, dedication, etc., and bringing these uh, contemporary uh, desires and needs that we have on the 21st century, that's about sustainability. So, um, but what we have- It kind of, it kind of goes back to, 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 you know, you know, the just, thing is, to help, is to help each other, but it's also a community, no? And that's what I know that you do, you've got these communities, where, yes. you, where you work, I know with the fish leather, so there's this sort of the technological with the craft, you know, taking something but moving it forward for future generations. And I think that is, is what's very important is something that through your instituto and, and your brand is, is, is what you do, because I know you've been working with these companies. I think you've been following them for almost 20 years. So you've sort of been growing together as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, <laughs> but you know, what's important for us designers now, uh, right now, because you know, when we design a collection, we bring all, you know, standards from the industry, yeah? new fa fabric colors, pigments, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we bring, we have it and we develop a collection to our clientele, you know, to our consumers. I think it's right now, we, that's what we do there in, in Osclean and Institute. We began, you know, to design, come to design in that way. We design from the raw, from the raw, from the fish skin, or from the uh, uh, organic cotton, from the recycled cotton, and some pigments we are using now. We as designers at Osclean and the Institute, we, we work on the both sides. It's so, first of all, it's interesting, it's the best, who loves designing, creating, it's great when you develop here. And sometimes when you go in that side, developing, understanding the supply chain, understanding the process or even creating redesigning this process you have so many inspirations to do that way you know it's uh, I, I i'd like to know to bring this 
this sustainable design thinking. It's so important for us this moment. And us in fashion, yes, we are one of the great protagonists in change sustainability yeah. in this planet, I'm sure. Absolutely. And it's, it's very important. And that's why my next question is for Sophia. Sophia, because you work with young designers, you've got, you know, the uh, Tbilisi Fashion Week, but then you also have the Be Next competition, which is, uh, is a way for young designers to promote themselves. But also you want you, you, you facilitate disciplines to meet with, with each other. I want you to know, like through your platform, do you also encourage and sort of mentor them about the importance of sustainability, environmental issues? Maybe like, you know, uh, Oscar was saying, introducing them to certain communities about the supply chain, traceability. Is this something that, that you encourage and, and tell the, the participants as well? Uh, yes, we, we just started doing this because fashion is quite new in Georgia. We've started working uh, in this direction seriously around five years ago when we launched the project. And before that, the designers didn't know anything about this, uh, anything. So we had to start from zero. First of all, it was the biggest problem was nobody knew where Georgia was. Most of the people don't still don't know, and <clears throat> especially in fashion industry. And we had to first of all introduce the country itself, invite as many people as we could to international press or experts, buyers, to Georgia, and to introduce our fashion through art and culture. Not only fashion, we have to do everything at the same time because they are discovering the country and the rest of the world, especially people in fashion, they have to discover Georgia first. They have to understand that this country exists. It's not in Russia. It's not state in US. It's independent country, which is quite small, but very unique and uh, interesting. And we have, for this small country like this, we have so many interesting and talented designers. But the most important part of our project is exactly mentoring them and guiding them to help them how to produce. Uh, we are uh, helping them to communicate with the important people from the industry or factories, uh, uh, press, uh, buyers. And uh, so we are creating the fashion industry in Georgia. We are doing just first steps at the moment. It's not like in Italy or in uh, USA or in any other. It's very uh, quite small industry at the moment with only talented designers who have huge desire to uh, put Georgia on the fashion map, let's say like that. But there's lots, I mean, I was fortunate because you invited me in 2012 to, to the Be Next and there was amazing talent and craft, which was absolutely wonderful. And I think last year, was it last year at PT, there was uh, Georgia, Georgia was represented. So it's really great to be able to see that Georgia as a country and the designers are gaining the exposure, you know, that, that is necessary because it's absolutely amazing. Marina, Mar the next question is for you because we all face this problem. We always, you know, the biggest thing we do when we wake up is what am I going to wear? And I know that uh, one of your projects, one of your art projects is, um, you did, was it last year, you did the one dress to impress where for two months you always wore the same outfit every single day and you know that's like breaking one of the biggest taboos of fashion because obviously through our clothes it's how we express and how we communicate so how did this come about and, and how did people react to you wearing the same clothes every day so i actually started this campaign almost four years ago five years ago i, I can see there's a pattern everything's been five sophia is five mario is five you five so it was good getting that quote <laughs> But the idea was really, five years ago, there was this, or you're sustainable or you're fashionable, but there's no in between. And it was it was really a kind of, as you mentioned, a taboo to repeat an outfit if you're part of the fashion industry or to be, or to go to a wedding and only have one dress throughout the whole wedding. Like this idea that this social pressure of, of always looking different and I had just entered the fashion industry as a model and, and was feeling this pressure more than ever. And was seeing people around me the same, my friends, like, oh, let's go buy something because we have this event and we don't have anything to wear. 
So I really decided to do this company called One Dress One Press. And I wore a red suit for two months every day to showcase that it's okay to repeat an outfit, that there's nothing wrong with it, nothing's gonna happen. And and one thing is saying repeat outfits and another thing is showing it. And it, throughout all my campaigns, I really emphasize not only saying something, but showing that it can be done and showing that it can be used. And the idea of this campaign was really showcasing that I'm part of the fashion industry and I'm going to repeat this outfit for two months. I'm going to go to events, go to meetings, go to shoots, and nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to be banned from this industry. I'm not going to be insulted. I'm not, nothing's going to happen for repeating an outfit. So it was really a project to normalize repeating outfits and normalize the idea that you don't need to have money to to be able to be part of this industry. It's a creative industry. It's an industry where you're part of it because of your creativity, how you style, how you style yourself, not because what you're wearing and who you're wearing and what collection you're wearing. That's not and I think one thing I really love about yourself and, and Mara is the fact that uh, you're, you're, you know, you're making these statements with bright, bold colors, which is nice, you know, as opposed to people sometimes are always a bit hesitant because they think that a sustainable brand is maybe, I, I, I don't like using this term, but sort of maybe a bit boring, a bit bland, you, you, you know, but the fact what with through your collections and through your artworks, you know, you're showing that sustainability can be fun, you know, it is, if we use the term of Generation Z, cool and all stuff like that. So it's really nice that, you know, people are starting to realize that sustainable fashion is not boring, you know. And I know also you doing yellow as a can, yellow like a lemon, uh, which again, using sustainable brands. And, and Mana, you mentioned before with, with the fabrics you're using. So if you can both just expand a bit how you, you know, making the sustainable fashion more open in the sense that you know raising awareness for people to understand that it's not something boring you know should i start you can start okay. um yeah well that is the big color is the basis of all these activations and as you mentioned like this idea of like sustainability is boring is white black or brown and it probably will break after one wear or it's plants so it was really um these campaigns were really showcasing color as, as the visual effect. Like you see one of the pictures of me doing the campaign and it's yellow, it's red, it's it's a color. So yellow like a lemon was actually launched during Paris Fashion Week. And I went to all the shows dressed like head to toe in yellow. And it was different sustainable brands, secondary market, borrowed pieces, rented pieces. And it was really a campaign to showcase that what sustainability means. It doesn't mean buy a sustainable brand, buy a sustainable brand, but it also means use something that has been used already, rent something, borrowed something. Um, and, and this idea that maybe sustainability, sustainable brands are more expensive generally. But if you if you rent something, if you borrow something, if you by second hand, it doesn't need to be expensive. And that's also being sustainable and a conscious consumer. So the idea for Yellow Like a Lemon was showcasing all the alternatives there is to, to change your clothes every day um, while being more conscious. And also I chose yellow because it's a bright color, but it's also the least color that you would think of sustainability. So, and I launched it during fashion week. So you would just see me running around in yellow and be like this crazy girl, like she's probably like top fashion brands all in yellow, but no, I was all sustainable. So it was really making a visual point that if I can do yellow for two months, you can do black for the rest of your life. So really showcasing that if you put your time and effort, you can be more conscious. Mara, I know, speaking of being more conscious, I know that you've actually started working now with, with Prana and the Responsible Packaging Movement, where you're streamlining and cutting back on packaging. How, 
what sort of brought that up? Because I mean, we all love receiving something which is amazingly packed, you know, the tissue paper and everything, but I know you're streamlining that and that's another step towards your brand being sustainable. So if we could just hear a bit more about that. You're on mute, sorry, Mara. Hi. Um, packaging is a huge hurdle in this industry. It's big. Um, and for us, it was definitely in the foreground of when we began moving in this direction. But since then, we've been able to dig in on different levels. So uh, early on for us, we did switch to um, compostable swim packaging that was in 2016. And it was a great alternative from our traditional poly bags, but it's still not a fix because not everyone has access to composting and it's um, really not good when you recycle these. So it was like one step forward, but not the ultimate, uh, it's still not the ultimate fix. Uh, it, for spring 2020, we, ship, we shifted to all um, glassoline packaging, which was a big evolution for us. And as far as like hang tags, um, stickers, buttons, we use compostable and, and, and recycled materials for all of those. Um, as far as the Prana responsible packaging um, that was launched by Prana, um, the we're working towards the reduction and eventually elimination of all uh, virgin plastic and non-forest stewardship, the FSC, uh, friendly forest fibers in our packaging. So that's a big one for us. And if the brands are working together, a huge part of all of this, and I think that it's being brought up a bit here and there, is the, the idea of collaboration. So when you get more brands together, more activists on the same thing, you can move forward a lot quicker. Um, and so collaborating with a prana to make this movement, it helps all of us involved, which is a really big one. Um, yeah, so for us, we've got our goals are set to um, eliminate all virgin plastic by 2022, um, eliminate any plastic packaging on any parts of our garments by 2023. And we already and do, but continue to prioritize paper packaging um, with high recycled content and remove any fiber sources from ancient or endangered forests by 2025 um, within our primary, secondary, and tertiary packaging. I mean, it's a big thing. Packaging alone is huge, like... Huge, absolutely huge. Huge. Wow. Oscar, I just wanted to touch on something that, that Marina mentioned about like reusing, rewearing. I know that um, uh, our clinic is working with Polygene, with the Safe Fresh uh, technology, where they treat the cotton so you, you wash less and you wear more. So again, that's another way of, of being sustainable. I just thought it kind of connected with, with, with what Marina was saying. If you can just tell us more about the polygen. You're on mute. You're on mute, Oscar. Sorry. <laughs> um, polygen is, is a, new, a new technology that uh, helps to keep the, the fibers. Uh, in a, in a bacterial stuff, if you wait. So, um, yes, the first issue on sustainability is us to be economic, uh, to be economic in all sense, in everything, from the water we use, from the clothing, everything. Of course, this is a, we are living a new, a new way that as less we can buy, as less we can use, as more we can use the same pieces of its fashion we can we can use it and we understand we can express ourselves in other ways that just not about changing our looks every day uh, polygenic it helps you you don't need really to to watch your your t-shirts uh, any every time you you wear it it's weird it, it's weird that listen that because sometimes you have but it's really that so we use it organic cotton, recycled cotton with tissues, and also with polygen. So in the whole sense, the whole sense of the piece has a very interesting process and I would need future of uh, sustainability. You know, it's about use and it's about the supply chain. It's very interesting process. Um, and technology, I think, will come to, to stay, stay longer. 
Um, we have a question from the audience, uh, from Mercy Noel, and they ask, what first step should we take so that our entire production cycle is truly sustainable and we have access to innovation? So how do we become entirely, uh, the entire production cycle truly sustainable? What, what would you guys I would say that it's the origin of the fiber. The origin of the fiber, if you think in a way. Origin of the fiber, to understand where it comes from. If it comes from, you know, oil industry, it comes from no organic uh, cultivations, it comes uh, from uh, farms that are not uh, fed with labels, things like that. I think it's the first one I would say. I would say in another way, thinking it's design thinking in your mind. This is the first thing. So you can think on the supply chain, and, and and the consumer use and the post use of the consumer. If you have the whole process, understand your sustainability in your mind to the economics, you can understand the whole uh, in, understand and work and intercede in the whole process, the supply chain, and the use, as we were talking about now, to use that less, and in the process of this circularity economy. So if you have this in your mind, you can understand the whole process how this piece of, how this fiber was, was produced, to the end, how it will come again back to the nature. So if you have that, it's the first one, first thing. I All right, think. is there anything that you would like to add as well? I, I, would, I, I would echo the end of life aspect. You know, we put a lot of focus on the, on the front part of it, on the production, which is enormously important. But I think that for oftentimes, like in that design process, that we stop once it leaves our warehouses or once it leaves, you know, the concept and the production part of it. But honestly, that's just the beginning of its life. The goal is to keep things out of landfills for as long as possible or for them never to get there or to have end of life, you know, set up within your company and within your design process. So that has to come at the very beginning of this. Like, how do I design something? you know, that will will just stay out of the film. So, yeah, I would add that. I would add that as I'm echoing Oscar, really. It's just the circularity part of it, but it's more important than we think, and it starts at the very beginning. So, Sophia, is this something, you know, any advice on any emerging designers or people, you know, you work with these young creatives, is there anything that you would like to add? Uh, yeah, sure. I think that they have to uh, now. Designers, young designers, are thinking more about it than before. And when we are now taking designers to our designers to our platform, we are our main uh, concept is that they have to think about all of this, and, and after they have to create their own brand. Otherwise, it has no future and uh, not, 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 not the potential because the world is changing so fast and we have to keep Absolutely. it. Speaking of waste, I don't know if we have time, but Pistoletto's Venus of the Rags was this amazing artwork. Demna used it for vet months, but Marina, you created this useful waste picture. And for me, it sort of reminded me of, of, of Pistoletto because it's you, we'll call you the Venus, amongst all, all you know the, the, the this waste and it was really i think a very strong image for people to understand the waste problem um i see jordana so i think i think it's time <laughs> but, um, but i don't know if you just want to tell us about that very briefly if we can have like a few seconds sure um yeah. i basically this image i wanted to create a visual representation of our waste because when we throw something away, we throw it to the trash, it goes away. But there's no way, it's still in our planet. Maybe you don't see it, but it's still there. And back to the idea of circularity, we can't keep throwing and creating waste. We really need to see a way to, um, to, to create circularity within all the production, especially um, which is a huge waste 